Okay, so chapter 15, control over genes. The major point here is what? Just because you got a gene doesn't mean you got to turn it on. Now, before we talked about transcription and translation, and we talked about going from a gene in DNA to an mRNA copy, and then an mRNA copy to a protein. We talked about the steps involved in the translation and transcription. Okay. But you know what? Just because you got a gene does not mean you have got to express that gene. Okay. We've got all sorts of different kind of cells. We've got skin cells. You know, we've got neurons. We've got cells, uh, muscle cells. <clears throat> all of these cells have the same genome in them. But the reason your skin cells is skin cell, and your neurons a neuron, and your muscle cells a muscle cell, is because different genes are turned on, different genes are turned off, and there is control, we say regulation, in the production of protein from the genes that are turned on. Okay. And that's the point of this chapter. Turning on and turning off genes. Okay, how do we do that? How does the cell, how do our cells control what genes are turned on? What kind of control points are there in that process? Okay, that's the big idea of this chapter. Now that whole process that I talked about, how does a skin cell become a skin cell, and a blood cell a blood cell, and a white blood cell a white blood cell, so on and so forth, we call that differentiation. We go from a uncommitted stem cell, and through a series of steps, we come out with a specific cell. And the reason it's specific is because some genes are turned on, we call those expressed genes, and some genes are not turned on. So how does this work? Well, first we can control transcription. Okay, we're going to talk about some specifics, and then we're going to talk about some broader categories here. Well, first is we can control transcription. Remember, transcription is what? The mate production of mRNA. Okay, or use that analogy with the thumb drive, right? We're making copies of that original file. Well, we can control how much mRNA is made. Okay. We can actually turn off the production of mRNA. The things that speed up the production of mRNA, the things that slow it down and stop it, are called, are called transcription factors. Transcription factors. These are going to speed up the production of mRNA or slow it down or even stop it. Okay, so activators are a type of transcription factor. These speed up transcription. This makes more mRNA. Repressors are going to slow it down or even stop it. Okay, so the first thing we can do is affect the transcription of RNA. Okay, more transcription more RNA, more protein. Less transcription, less mRNA, less protein. No transcription, no mRNA, no protein. Major regulatory thing here is transcription factors. So know the definition. Now, you should have an... What is this picture? This, this is a very important picture on the right. This talks about the different control points that the cell has going from DNA to an active protein. Okay, DNA is at the top in the blue box, and active protein is at the bottom in the green box. Come take take home point here is what? Just because you got DNA doesn't mean you're going to have that protein. There's a lot of little control points, control knobs, for want of a better term, that our cells have to turn on and off the production of RNA. Sometimes it can crank it up, sometimes it can pull it down. Just depends. Um, so we're going to talk about just a couple of them here. Okay, so let's talk about that first one, uh, mRNA processing. Okay. Kind of step back here. 
that transcription we talked about, point A, that point A is this panel is this transcription factors. So A on this diagram, I'm, I'm going to show you is transcription factors. So you see it where it says DNA and then A transcription. Well, that's where transcription factors come into play. Part A there is what? Transcription factors can make more RNA, slow down RNA production, or stop it entirely. And we know the effect of that, of part A. More RNA means possibly more protein. Less RNA, less protein. No RNA, no protein. B. Okay, we see B, it says mRNA processing. Okay. Well, remember we talked about how RNA is made, and you have to have the introns and the exons and all that stuff, and we take the introns out, we put together the exons, and we called, talked about alternative splicing. Well, what if you don't process the RNA? Think of this, think of this whole thing as an assembly line. What if you don't, you know, pull out the introns? What happens? Well, that RNA is not going to continue. You're going to cause a, a stoppage in that process. Conversely, you can uh, do alternative splicing here, where you're going to make different RNA transcripts. We talked about alternative splicing before. You do splicing together differently, you get different RNA molecules. Okay? Panel C, or part C, mRNA transport. Okay. RNA is made in the nucleus. Now, for RNA to be effective, it has to leave the nucleus and go into the cytoplasm. But what if we, instead of letting it go out of the nucleus, hold it back? We sequester it. Well, if we don't transport it out of the, the, the factory, so to speak, it's not going to go in the cytoplasm. It's not going to do any good. Okay, so the cell can control the release of mRNA from the nucleus into the cytoplasm. If it holds in the nucleus, just because you got mRNA, doesn't mean you're going to do anything. You just got mRNA. It's not going to be made into protein. It has to get out of the nucleus to do some good. Another control point: mRNA stability mRNA, and that's D, uh, mRNA is inherently unstable. Okay? It's, it can degrade very easily. Now, how the cell increases its life is to add a stretch of A's on its tail. We call that a poly-A tail. Well, we it can control how long that tail is. And think of that as like a... a a sacrificial thing of, of sequence. The longer that is, the longer the RNA will last. Well, you can control how long that poly-A tail is. Longer it is, longer the mRNA lasts, the more protein it makes. The shorter that tail, the shorter the time that RNA lasts, the less protein it makes. Another one, RNA interference. It's not really on this diagram, but that's another control point. Another one, that protein processing. Okay? Part E, just because it's made that peptide chain, and remember we talked about the rough endoplasmic reticulum start of the semester early on? Well, that protein has to be processed. You know, sometimes lipids are added to it. It's pulled apart and squeezed and changed and altered. But what if you don't put, it's, it's like finishing touches, right? Well, what if you don't put the finishing touches on that polypeptide chain and make it into an active protein? That's another way the cell does control. So what's the whole point here? I've talked a lot, and I want you to see the point. The cell can very precisely control how much active protein comes out, if it even comes out at all. Because it's got multiple little control knobs. Think of A, B, C, D, and E as little knobs or switches. 
and the cell can very precisely control each of these little knobs to fine tune the amount of protein that comes out. Now, that active protein, that thing at the bottom, the amount of active protein and the type of active protein make our cells the cells they are. Our skin cells are skin cells because that active protein is a particular type and a particular amount. Our neurons are neurons because that active protein or active proteins are a particular amount and a particular type. Our muscle cells are muscle cells again because that active protein at the bottom is of a particular amount and a particular type. Okay, So our cells can control the amount of protein that comes out. And that control allows for differentiation of the cell. Okay. That's the take-home point. So again, just uh, highlight what the cell can do in the nucleus. Transcription factors to slow up, to slow down or speed up or even stop the production of RNA. It can control how fast it splices that RNA together and how it splices it, right? It has those introns, it's got to take those introns out and glue together those exons. Well, which exons it glues together just depends on the cell. mRNA transport. What if it makes the RNA and just holds it to the side and doesn't release it? Well, that's not going to, that's going to slow down translation and even stop it. Think of, think of this as a part C, we got finished product and we put it in boxes and we put we store it somewhere. We're not releasing it. It can't make protein. Once that protein is out, well, we can control how long it can be translated. We can, you know, make that tail longer, that poly A tail longer, make it shorter. How long does that mRNA last? Uh, RNA interference. Then finally, that protein processing. The protein that comes out, that polypeptide chain that comes out of the ribosome, is often not the final protein. It has to have some finishing touches, some polish added to it. Okay, That's protein processing. Happens in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, for example. Well, we can control that. Ultimately, we control, and here's the take-home point, guys, we control the amount and the type of active protein that comes out. Okay. And the amount of type and act, the amount and the type of active protein here at the bottom determines the type of cell our cells are. Skin cells have different types of active protein. Neurons have different active proteins. Muscle cells have different active proteins. They all have the same genome, the whole, they all have the same genes in the nucleus, but which genes are turned on to make mRNA, then mRNA into protein, and then protein into an active protein are entirely different. Drosophila, uh, very important. Um, it found some homeotic genes. It, it, we use Drosophila uh, as an important study tool for genetics. That's what you need to know. What you, um, homeotic genes, these are just definitions you need to know. How the body plan is determined, how our body plans are determined, all stems from something called homeotic genes. They're master control genes for uh, more of a better term. Why we form a head, a torso, so on and so forth. All goes back to homeotic genes. Okay. And a lot of these, we studied them, comes from Drosophila. A way that we study genes is we call knockout experiments. Basically, what we do, and we, we study a lot of the, the Hox genes, the homeotic genes this way, um, but not just these. If you want to detect the function of something, a very handy way of determining it is to turn it off. 
So we have molecular methods where we can go in and turn specific genes or sets of genes off. And then when we turn them off, we see what happens. And just so happens when we turn some of these genes off, we can see changes in test subjects like, you know, Drosophila. But the point is, what are knockout experiments? We turn a gene off, then we compare it to one that has that gene on. Any difference we see, we can attribute to that gene that's been turned off. Finally, prokaryotic gene control. Okay, these are bacteria, a little bit different than eukaryotic organisms. Eukaryotic organisms like us, we have a nucleus. We have introns and exons. We got a lot of control points. Bacteria are not that way. First, they don't have a nucleus. Second of all, they have no introns and exons. Okay, basically, it's what you see is what you get. So they don't have that fine-tuned control. Okay. Features you see in prokaryotic or uh, genes is something called an operon. You didn't know what an operon is. Okay. An operon is one promoter and several genes following that promoter. Okay. What's the idea here? Um, if you have three genes that are related that are usually turned on at about the same time, why have three promoters? Why don't just have one? Because if gene 1, 2, and 3 are going to be used at the same time, why not just turn them on at the same time? Well, that's what the lac operon does, or an operon. So an operon, you need to know the definition, it's a promoter followed by two or more genes. Prototypical example is the lactose utilization operon, or we call it the lac operon for short. Look at the top. We have a promoter and three genes in that lac operon, or lactose utilization operon. Just know what an operon is. One promoter, multiple genes.